Good morning, everybody from Vietnam, Hanoi. Uh, today is, um, I lost track of time. I haven't been home in a while, but um, what day is it? Friday. And uh, I booked a cruise to Hong Long Bay. So I'm going downstairs in a couple minutes to wait for my bus. It takes about two and a half hours or so to three hours, depending on traffic, to get to Ha Long Bay, that area which is um, to the a little northeast of Hanoi. And if you don't know what Ha Long Bay is, it's one of the, uh, they would call it the newer seven wonders of the world, so to speak. And it's also a UNESCO heritage site. And uh, backstory on this, I'm kind of disappointed. I really wanted to go on a cruise with the brand La Regina. And I'll post a little snippet of here up here so you can see what it was like. I, I watched numerous things on it and did my research and that's the one I wanted. However, yesterday, last minute, I got a email uh, from the booking people, which I booked directly from their website, who said that uh, he forgot about me and I booked two months ago. How can you forget about a customer? A very interesting. But he was very apologetic and he said um, because he forgot about me, even though I paid and everything, um, there was no room on the cruise. He already booked everybody else that had paid after me, which I don't think is fair. I think you should tell the other people sorry that you made a mistake. But anywho, he uh, gave me a discount. He's returning some of my money back and putting me on a different cruise. But unfortunately, it's not with La Regina. It's a different brand. It's called Hermes. I uh, watched a couple of videos on that from people who have taken it and uh, it doesn't compare to what I wanted. It's still a luxury cruise, considered five star, but I'll be filming a little bit of it here and there and showing you guys what the experience is like and hopefully um, I'm not disappointed, but uh, I'll catch you there when we go downstairs and wait for the bus. Okay, I'm on the bus. You can see it's very spacious. It's called a limo limousine bus. Um, very fancy, very comfy seats. Took the back. And I think I'm the only American on this bus. Everybody else is Taiwanese. In the front, it's like an airplane. You got music, movies, and here's a USB port so you can charge your phone. And the seats do uh, recline and have a footrest, but um, I'm not the tallest person. I'm only 5'2", but I can barely um, fit my feet right here. This is the first place I've ever felt tall. I'm like taller than most men here. And this is the bus that comes and picks you up. It's actually very comfortable. Okay, halfway through this bus ride, you have a pit stop at a Pearl showroom and it's similar to Thailand where they make you have a pit stop at somewhere where they're trying to sell something to you. Um, it was interesting though they show you how they raise pearls and you can buy pearl necklaces here but there's also a cafe with um, coffee, teas, and food if you're hungry and a restroom. But if you're actually into jewelry and pearls, they are really cheap here. So you can buy a pearl necklace for 69 US dollars to up to $300, which is actually a steal. Uh, you can never find those kind of prices at home. Okay, the bus dropped us off at the Hermes Cruises office where we wait. And the ship is right outside. And they usually let us on in about an hour or half an hour. And you get a welcome drink. Um, I think this is Cha Dao, which is peach iced tea, and it's very lovely. Across the street is uh, this little store, so I'm gonna go maybe get some snacks because it's probably cheaper than the boat. And some beer. I don't have some beer. They have a bar, but I'm sure they would be off. And they've got snacks. Look at these lays. Yum truffle. Truffle mushroom. Korean uh, chua han, south and in. Korean spicy chicken with cheese. Sok chung moi. Lobster there. Nori flavor. Hmm. 
I think I might try this one and that one. I don't know how much it is though. So if you ever come to the Carney's Cruise, the office is right here where we're waiting for them to prepare the ship and put all of our luggage in our room. And the place where we got the chips and the beer is right across the street. If you go more down, it seems like the ladies are all smart and they have different stalls. So as you go more down, this whole boulevard is full of um, offices for the cruises and the buses come and drop them off at your appropriate company. So it's easy to find snacks and probably cheaper to do so before you get on the boat. And I know that there's those ladies that come on the boat um, and follow the boats in the sea and sell you beer as well from your balcony, but she might be more expensive as well. So there she is, the ship for Hermes Cruises that will be on for a day and a half about. Okay, they say our ship is ready and we're all gonna board. So they took all our big luggage and they're supposed to put it right in front of your room. So you just take your backpack and your personal belongings with you. And we're supposed to have lunch straight away. So we'll see. Okay, we made it on the ship. They give you a nice towel to clean your hands. And so far it looks beautiful. So we're supposed to head up to the dining room and have some lunch. So far, the presentation's very lovely. The dining room area is great. Uh, they give you this welcome drink. It's pure, fresh, squeezed watermelon juice. Very lovely. And this is what the buffet looks like. It's going to be a buffet-style lunch. So can't wait for that. And we're off. The boat is moving. So here's some of the food. We've got some noodles with some vegetables, bok choy, a halong seafood soup, um, roasted pork, and a lemongrass chicken, I believe. All looks very good. And a lot of seafood too, some shrimp and some fried catfish with dill. I didn't want to be rude and hold up the line to film every station, but basically there's all kinds of seafood, clams, fried squid, sushi, and many other things I didn't show. All of the food was really tasty, and I applaud the chef. What makes this meal more amazing is the view. Right away, off the bat, right, probably 10 minutes into eating, you see the beautiful views of the limestone mountains in Halong Bay. So I'm out here on the, I guess, deck in the front where you can see the captain behind me um, doing his thing. And look at this beautiful view of Halong Bay. Awesome. And you could see everything while eating your lunch. And it was a delicious lunch. Uh, full of seafood, so if you're a seafood lover, um, I went back for seconds. Uh, really good food, really good clams, fresh, fresh shrimp, and they had their own style of sushi, which was actually good. It had 
tobiko on there and some uh, local fish which i don't know what it meant it had it in vietnamese but i'm gonna turn it around again and you can see the view and then we're gonna go check out the room next okay we're going down the stairs and there's a washroom here that's public and we're gonna go for my room that's uh 205. I think I'm right here. They put your luggage right in front of your door. So let us see what's in the room. I'm sure it's going to be fabulous. Let me get the key. And the big reveal. So this is a junior suite. Get my luggage. miss everything in there okay and now all right <clears throat> okay got the luggage in and uh this is the room pretty awesome bed pretty spacious we got this this is what i wanted so i can relax and see the view great um balcony with a beautiful view of Ha Long Bay. Oh my goodness, they give lychee guys. Check it out. And they said it's complimentary. They said complimentary fruits and I'm thinking like cut pineapple or something or watermelon, but nope, lychee. Definitely have a lot here. They said there's free coffee and tea. Cha Dao is peach tea which I really enjoyed. They gave it to us uh, during the waiting period, which I mistakenly thought it was apple juice at first uh, taste, but as I kept going, I could tell it was chada. Um, cups. Oh, they said you get complimentary waters, Kleenex, and um, some robes and closet space and stuff. Your life jackets are up here. There's an AC system in there. And um, just like little places to put your stuff in a safe. <clears throat> and then here is the awesome bathroom. Um, so not quite the same as the one as in La Regina, but I'll take it. I don't even take baths because I don't have time to soak. I'd rather be doing other things, but you got that nice view if you wanted to roll that up while you're taking a nice hot bath. Um, nice sink, cups to rinse your mouth, and in every hotel I noticed here, they give you all the stuff, a shower cap, a razor, a comb, in case you forgot, toothbrush, and Q-tips, garbage, toilet, with a old-fashioned bidet type thing. And a beautiful shower. Just like my hotel, they have those really nice big shower heads that feel like rain. Really beautiful. I can't complain. I'm going to go relax until our next um, adventure. We have an itinerary to follow. And it's kind of packed with things. I would rather just relax. Um, I picked La Regina because there wasn't many things to do because it's an older crowd because I just want to relax but um, I'm willing to do these activities I guess because it's part of um, what you pay for I guess so uh, I'm gonna sit outside and relax and enjoy the view. So we've boarded a tender boat, which is connected to the ship, and we're going to take our first excursion, which is to a pearl farm again, and kayaking. So we're back at another pearl farm. Uh, they really push to sell these pearls. Um, you can see over here, though, how they grow them in these ponds.
and they show you how they grow from being little baby oysters to big ones. And this is where you kayak. So I'm out here kayaking in the middle of Halong Bay. It's one of the activities to do. Sorry, I'm gonna be shaking this because I'm trying to paddle my way so I don't hit other people. But you can see everybody else doing their thing. This one, not the greatest because the La Regina one was near a cave. Don't see any caves here. So, that's kind of unfortunate, but you know, Halong Bay is full of different limestone um, islands like this, and they all kind of meld together all throughout this bay. And for those that know me, I wish I had a fishing pole. This would be awesome, but no fishing pole. And then that's uh, where you get your kayak and your life vest. And you can fit two people in here, but I'm by myself and I am by myself because I don't want to be with somebody I don't know. <laughs> Lone wolf in it. So I'm closer to this limestone island. And if you're wondering, the colors won't do it justice on the camera. The water's pretty clean and, you know, I've heard some people complain there's plastic pollution or litter in the water but I've seen it here and there but for the most part it's very clean just a little bit of leaves here and there and it's very calm because Halong Bay is a protected bay naturally so you don't get much wave action and if you're wondering it's uh, a very smooth ride on the boat so you don't get seasick because there are no waves since it's a protected bay so far, would I recommend it? Yes, I'm having fun. Guess you would have fun with somebody else, but I like to be alone and I like peace and quiet and just doing my own thing and not having to, I don't know. Sometimes you just don't want to listen to somebody else yapping. I know that's mean and selfish, but that's what a vacation is. Just do your own thing. Do your own plans. Don't have to agree or compromise with somebody that might be difficult. If you're with somebody that's um, pretty, you know, mellow and stuff, that's cool. But sometimes it doesn't always end up that way, when, especially when you're in a big group. So I'm going to continue to kayak and then show you the rest of the trip. Okay, we just got dropped off by our tender boat on T-Top Island. And it's supposed to be a place where you can go swim at the beach or hike up the mountain if you wish. But I had enough hiking for this trip. But you can uh, go up there if you wish. There are vendors here that sell you coconut juice, soda, beer, snacks, food. This island is called T-Top, but it's actually Titov Island, which is named after German Titov. He was a Russian cosmonaut and a friend of Ho Chi Minh. And this is his statue on the island. So this is the beach area. It's quite small, so it is packed full of tourists. And there's not much room to swim, so I don't think I'm gonna swim. I think I'm just gonna relax on a chair. Well, that was chaotic and uh, kind of shitty actually. <laughs> the beach was crowded, the water was nice, but I did make friends with um, some lovely Australians, some Aussies, James and Emma, thanks, and James had subscribed, so shout out to you guys for making my trip here at Tip Top Island uh, memorable and fun. I enjoy talking with you. All right, we're back at the boat. I am on my balcony relaxing. They anchored somewhere in between these uh, limestone mountainous things. And uh, there's a bunch of other boats around us, but they're pretty far away, so I don't think uh, they'd bother anyone. Not so far. Very touristy. But um, I, I guess it was okay. Uh, I wish the beach was a little bigger, but you can't ask for much. Um, it's one of the only sandy beaches on one of these um, 
islands, I guess. The rest don't have beaches, which I was speaking to a couple of people that had good points before I jumped on my tender boat, and they said that it's actually a good thing there's one beach because if all of them had beaches, they'd probably be very overpopulated and people would trash them. So it's good to know that the rest of these islands are uninhabited and you know in their purest form so that's a good point okay so dinner is not till sorry use military time 1920 720 which is in an hour and 20 minutes so i'm gonna try the lays i got from a lady um across the street from the boat tour uh, center before we boarded and this is the lobster with golden egg sauce and I love trying different lays from around the country and Asia and the world. In Thailand, we tried a bunch. Um, so let's try it. It's a wavy lay. Mm. It's good. You know what it tastes like? If you are a fan of eating shrimp heads, the, um, I don't know what to say, the roe or the, um, or the crab miso, the insides, the innards of the crab, that's what it tastes like. So if you're a fan of that, which I like, mixed with rice, this is what it tastes like exactly. And it's pretty interesting how they can get these flavors in these chips. So I'm not going to finish them all because um, I'll finish them later, but I just wanted to try this one as well so you guys can see what it tastes like, hopefully. This is the Korean spicy chicken with cheese. So let's try this one and see what it tastes like. Ugh. Actually, it smells like puke. <laughs> Frick. Yuck but um, hopefully it doesn't taste like puke. Not my thing. It does have that hint of funky puke sourness. Really unappetizing, but after, the aftertaste is hot and spicy like um, gochujang. I wouldn't say it tastes any chicken. I don't know what spicy Korean chicken is supposed to taste like. It doesn't look fried on the picture. It just looks like wet chicken like brushed with a sauce with cheese. I don't know. Half Korean, but I've never seen that. Maybe it's something in, big in Korea. But um, because it's super cheap and I don't like them, they really smell unappetizing to me. Uh, I don't know if it's supposed to be the cheese smell, but it does not smell good. Um, in the trash she goes, and uh, we'll stick to the lobster. Prior to dinner, there's a sunset party on the upper deck where you can also go to a bar and enjoy some drinks while watching the sunset. They also have an activity where they show you how to cook spring rolls. However, I just wanted to relax, so I didn't participate. This was dinner, which was served in different courses. This was a chicken Caesar salad, very good. And this was a cream of mushroom soup with some smoked bacon. This was a poached fish dish with a burr blanc sauce, mashed potatoes, and some fresh steamed veg. The last dish was a Vietnamese barbecued beef with a piece of fried mochi dough right next to it. It was very unique and everything tasted very good. The next morning, I woke up to this beautiful view. Unfortunately, they have another excursion at 7 a.m., which in my opinion is just way too much things to be doing. And usually when you're on vacation, you just wanna relax and not wake up that early. So I opted out of that uh, excursion and just stayed in my room and relaxed. So you don't have to go. 
However, if you do want their light breakfast, you do have to wake up early in order to go upstairs and have your breakfast. So I had some coffee with a biscuit. They have an omelet station where the chef cooks an omelet made to order. And I had some fruits and bread. This is just a light breakfast. They will serve brunch after the people come back from the excursion and that's where there's more options. They also make fresh yogurt in these little uh, jars here and it was very tasty. Once the group comes back to the boat from their excursion, they serve brunch. And as you can see, there's many different options. I had french fries, bacon, sausage, fried noodles, um, fried rice, which was really very good. And they have vegetarian options as well. After brunch, we head back into the marina. They say it's a two day cruise, but it's really a day and a half. And once docked at the marina, there is a bus waiting for you with your luggage to take you back into Hanoi. What did I think? Did I think it was worth it? I did. The service, room, and food were exceptional. It was quite touristy, but for $153 with transportation to and from Hanoi, this luxury cruise was a deal. So hopefully you can find a luxury cruise that suits you if you want to see Halong Bay. And I'll see you next time and hopefully this was informative to you.